Hi, I'm Oliver, Team Principal of Durham University Electric Motorsport, and we're here today at the Sustainable Innovation Forum in Marrakesh, Morocco, for COP22. And I'm joined today by Paul, CEO of Kiera Motors. And I'd just like to him to introduce a bit about what he's doing here at this conference. Um, Kiera Motors came to uh, attend the Sustainable Innovation Forum as part of our drive to share our story about the practical steps we have taken in Uganda towards decarbonizing mobility, especially mass mobility in the urban centers uh, through developing um, electric and solar vehicles locally. I'm proud to observe and note that we have developed the first electric and solar electric bus in Africa at Kira Motors in Uganda, the Kayola Solar Bus, which we are very proud about as the heritage of science and technology innovation for green mobility in Africa. Our story is uh, a story of resilience, <laughs> a story of commitment, a story of determination, starting with not much and building upon the passion as the core aspect of what we had to a point where today we have transitioned from an extracurricular activity at a university into a national program for industrialization aimed at uh, informing the development of automotive manufacturing capabilities in Uganda. And that's what's so fantastic about your project. So we've brought our own solar-powered car to this conference. We're showing it off to the world and everyone here. And like yourselves, we are, we are kind of earlier in that process. We are currently a university extracurricular activity run by students, mostly on passion and drive with very little resources. So what I'd love to ask you now is, how did you make that transition from being what we are today to a large-scale manufacturer being so innovative in, in your area? One of the things that I, I, I must uh, say here today is the young generation today is budding with ideas. The, the so-called millennials are budding with ideas, ideas where the thoughts are not in it. There is no box, actually. <laughs> so we cannot talk about thinking outside the box. And as scholars at Makere University then, uh, in 2007, when we started exploring these uh, possibilities, what I did when I observed that my, my scholars, my students, were excited and had so many ideas, they had so many things they wanted to do, was to say, let us create this extracurricular activity, the after school thing, where we go and we try to exercise these ideas and apply perhaps some of the things that we think are relevant that we have learned in class into something viable. And that is how this idea was born. And along the way, um, we got an opportunity, given that at the time we were in a, a collaboration with Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT in the United States, on another program for internet laboratories. And at the time, they were looking at uh, uh, also an extracurricular activity there where scholars were uh, exploring, developing a concept vehicle, a concept hybrid vehicle for the Indian market. And that gave us that spark, that aha moment that actually uh, there is something here which we had not explored for our scholars to infuse their energy and to apply themselves intellectually and go in there. So uh, getting back to the gist of the question, how do you do it? It starts with a vision. And when you have that vision, you then need to be clear on your mission. When we got the vision from that participation in a wider consortium about you know, value addition in the space of automotive engineering, design, and manufacturing, we then had to be clear on what we wanted to do. And we started by making a very practical step. Let us build a two-seater electric vehicle. Very clear mission. Something that can be done, something that sounded practical, and something which had the potential 
of attracting and cultivating interest and dialogue and conversation in the wider stakeholder community. And we started. The interesting bit about this is usually when we are discussing uh, projects in, a, in a classical project management theory and or practice, you're told by all scholars, <laughs> all celebrated academicians, that in order for you to deliver your project, of course you, you must have a clear scope for what you want to achieve. So the project must be delivering actual value. And I think that when we wanted to deliver actual value, we wanted to show that we can build an electric vehicle. We were putting together a team which was passionate, which was exploring into the unknown, which had very little knowledge of even what a car is in the first place. I must note that all my students were not drivers. They did not have a valid driving license <laughs> when we started working on <laughs> developing this vehicle. And we were not developing a conventional vehicle, but we were developing an electric vehicle with sophisticated control strategies, electronics, software, and all of these things which are not even available in the country. Let's talk resources. Let's talk budget. All of these things were not there. But you cannot underestimate what human beings can accomplish when they are determined. And okay. that's what has driven us to this point. And that's something that's incredible that we find as well. We're, we're constantly told, what are you doing? You can't do that. That's, that's a crazy idea. We, we say, you know, we, we said we're going to build a car that can go 3,000 kilometers powered by nothing but the sun's energy. Mm -hmm. We're going to ship it to Australia. We're going to race it internationally. We're going to do all this in the desert with no water, no, no resources around us if something goes wrong. And more than that, we're then going to take that car. We're going to go to events around the country. And we're going to culminate it by going to the United Nations Sustainable Innovation Forum on the world stage. But we're students. And that's what's, that's what's fantastic about this. And similar, similar to the way you, you approach your problems, it's about never saying never. It's about uh, continuing that, that process. and Taking you know, it further, taking it further. And one of the things I must is applaud you for the great job you're doing. Because I, I mean, for us in Uganda, it makes a lot of sense to start discussing solar because you have the sun available at least six hours of uh, optimum intensity for solar harvesting every single day. But you're coming from the UK where I don't even know where the sun comes out. So <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very crazy that you can even think about that. Um, and, 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 and congratulations on what you've been able to do. And that is the way to go. And of course, what this is showing the world again and again is that uh, there is a new breed of individuals, which is resident especially at our tertiary institutions. They have not yet been contained by the practices and the classical rules and procedures of getting things done out there in the industry, who are fundamental to ensuring sustainable development for the current and the next generation, and perhaps even the generations before us. Because when we look at some of the outstanding uh, innovations that have turned into multi-billion investments in the past 30 years, you see that most of these people were actually in that domain. The likes of the Bill Gates, the Steve Jobs, talk about the Mark Zuckerberg, and so many others in Silicon Valley today. So I believe that... Uh, 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 the story that you share, the story that I share, is one which is, uh, uh, these are stories which are supposed to be brought closer to the decision stream, to the value chain for sustainable development, so that people can see how they can fuel these undertakings to realize the transformation we need. Because we have already demonstrated that we can build solar cars in Uganda. We can build solar cars in Europe where there is no sun. Now, what we need is the other people who have the means to make decisions, to facilitate these interventions, to come in, work with us, provide the necessary resources, the budgets, and also the policy interventions to secure 
what we prospect today for the better of the people today and the future that we desire to be better. Oh, definitely. And the other thing that we're really trying to show is that we're trying to prove with our project that a car doesn't have to be what you traditionally think of it to be. Just because it's solar uh, isn't, isn't all we're pushing. We're pushing high efficiency, high, um, high economy of use, while still maintaining practical speeds yeah. and still making it a car like you would think of any other. But while showing you can do this in a fundamentally different way. And as you say, this is the kind of stuff that people need to take up, need to take these ideas and actually implement them and bring them forward so that these stuff can actually happen. And that's very important because we have had uh, a lot of uh, uh, invention and innovation in the classical automotive industry there, focusing on more horsepower, focusing on more torque, perhaps putting energy into systems where it may not even be required. What do you do with a car that runs at 320 miles per hour? <laughs> well, the answer is not very much. And I'd like to thank you for joining me here today. It's yeah. been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and get to know a bit more about your project. And hopefully, you know, go forward, we can do some more things together. Pleasure indeed it has been to share our story with you and we are looking forward to synergizing as we continue pushing the horizon for solar as a source of energy for mobility across the world. Fantastic. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Pleasure.